we were talking about the standard of truth and righteousness and in our last study and only Jesus satisfies that sinless perfection no one else has ever come close to sinless perfection since we all sin and the fall short the Bible is clear on that of God's glory and perfection it leaves us all without excuse we all we all are sinners every one of us right. have sin in Romans chapter 3 it shows that both Gentiles and Jews must come through faith in Christ's finished work to be declared righteous and just before God what does that say you cannot come to God from heritage from heritage from obedience to the law or any other way the only way to come to God is through Jesus Christ and what he has accomplished on the cross in the first nine verses of chapter 3 we are shown our guilt and uh, our abject need we have serious need yes we do every one of us uh, have you ever been impressed with your sinfulness has that ever happened to you where you just got a glimpse of yourself as you were the Lord the Lord showed you your lacking your need well he will do that uh, the Jew is guilty because even though they were given the covenant they were given the promise yes. they had the law yes. they obeyed the oracles of God yes. they were still sinners right. uh, that is a it has to be let me put that in my colloquialism a downer mm -hmm. that when everything that you do still falls short yes. the inadequacy of the human race to be able to do what needs to be done on their own merit on their own value yes we are dependent on God's grace and mercy the Gentiles are guilty that it, that encompasses everyone beside a Jew yes. they're guilty because they are under the power of sin we are all basically all people are under the power of sin tonight we're going to be looking at that power of sin being broken off of our lives <clears throat> so in the next nine verses we're shown how sin has affected the whole human race begin with me in Romans 3 verse number 10 as it is written there is none righteous no not one there is none who understands there is none who seeks after God they have all turned aside they have together become unprofitable there is none who does good no not one verse 13 their throat is an open tomb with their tongues they have practiced deceit the poison of asps that's a snake is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness their feet are swift to shed blood destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace they have not known there is no fear of God before their eyes this is a picture of the total depravity of man before God yes our depravity every one of us are sinners we are yes. born sinners we are under the power of sin sin <laughs> has its sway over our lives mm -hmm. it has control over our lives and because sin has so much power and control over us we are hopeless in fact all humanity is hopeless before God there is no way that we can bring ourselves. you cannot bring yourself into a right relationship with God that's right we cannot uh, we may ask for forgiveness from our sins <laughs> but forgiveness alone does not bring us into relationship no. 
The only thing that can bring, bring us back to a right relationship with God is what Jesus Christ has done for us, what God has done for us in providing salvation. The good news is that God has provided hope for people who are totally depraved, who cannot save themselves. God offers salvation to anyone who puts their faith and trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. These words in Galatians are very important for us. It says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me, and the life I live in the body, the life I live in my body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is the definition of a normal Christian life. We live crucified. Yes. We live alive in Christ. We live by faith in the Son of God. All of those things together defines how we live. Yes. Now, right now, we have a new life. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are crucified with him. Praise the name of the Lord. That's good news for every one of you. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the only answer for our human need. You know, it, it may be confining to the human psyche, the human mind, to think that there is no way to God, no answer but one. And if I reject the one answer, then I'm, I'm rejecting God's, God's answer, God's supply, God's purpose. So we must, we must see, it's very important. This is, again is the gospel message, the good news that God's son vicariously died in our place to provide our forgiveness and justification. Vicariously means in our place. Jesus died in our place. He paid the price for us as a substitute. God provided a substitute God provided his son. He didn't provide a ram. He didn't provide a lamb. He provided his son. God's son is the gift of God, the price that is necessary to provide your salvation. Jesus is our substitute. He is our substitute in the holy place. It's very important, and if, if you have an understanding of the Old Testament law and the tabernacles, it would help us with understanding this a little bit more. Uh, in the Old Testament, the sacrifice was made and the blood was taken into the holy place and the blood was sprinkled on the altar. In that sense, they had a covering for their sin. Yes. All of our sins, listen, <laughs> all of your sins, all of our collective sins yes. have been laid upon Jesus Christ. Yes. The victory for our sinful life yes. is Jesus Christ. Amen. I think, uh, again, the Jew, the legalist, the moralist, let me break that down. The Jew who's looking back and saying, I'm right with God because I am a descendant of Abraham. The moralist, the person who says, I, I, I keep myself pure by the things that I do. The legalist that says, I have kept all of the law and I have never transgressed. All of them must come to grips with this fact that the only way that we can be right with God is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The psalmist said in Psalms 143 and verse 2, no one is righteous in God's sight. That goes all the way back to the Old Testament. And again, that is, that is a huge statement for Old Testament people to hear that no one is righteous before God. That's right. We are all, everyone on the same level, yes. Jew and Gentile, 
bond, free, whatever we may be, we are all subject to the same rule. We are all unrighteous before God. Yes. Romans 3 and verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in God's sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So what the law does, the law testifies of our guilt and our sin. It shows us exactly what we have done that is against God. Now, the law is pure. Don't, don't get your mind wrong and start accusing the law of God. The law of God is pure and the law of God is righteous. If we were able as human beings to wholly, fully obey the law, we might be able to present ourselves to God as righteous, but we all fail. We all fall short of God's glory. We have all sinned. Yes. So we all need forgiveness of sin and we need deliverance from the power of sin. The sins that we have practiced, and let's leave everybody else out of it tonight. The sins that we have individually practiced has impacted, it has affected our innermost being, our, right. our conscious and our mind. So that we are, we are different because sin has had its rule and its reign over our life. Yes. The power of sin is that inward inclination to do iniquity or sin. Yes. Every one of us. Have you noticed that a baby, a child, an infant does not have to be taught to sin. That's right. Mm -hmm. A baby, a child, yes. as soon as they learn to talk, mm -hmm. I didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, they did do it. Yeah. You know, we we can all find in ourselves that that inward inclination. The Apostle Paul as as great of a man as he was, he said, the things that I want to do, I, I do not do. And the things I don't want to do, I catch myself doing. I'm in this conundrum. I'm in this, I'm in this uh, catch-22 situation. What do I do? How can I present myself righteous and acceptable before God? Because I keep on falling. That is the power of sin in our life. Now, if that power of sin is so controlling, if it is present in us at all times, if every one of us have the inward inclination to sin, mm -hmm. all that is necessary is that inclination to be released to take action. It might, it might help us. It might hurt. Uh, so if it hurts, I'm sorry. If it helps, great. <laughs> have you noticed in your own life that you have that struggle to do right? Mm -hmm. That there are, and there are so many things that come into play here. Maybe your struggle is with your mouth, your words. Maybe your struggle is with your thought life. Maybe your struggle is with the things that you see that you desire. I mean, it, this goes in so many veins of life. It's, it's as broad and as wide as the human race. Right. We all have different things that uh, we're inclined toward that draw us away from God. And all that has to happen for us to commit sin is for us to release ourselves to that inclination or that desire that is going on on the inside. The scripture calls that the inward lust, the things that we lust after and that we desire and then we go after. So we may seek forgiveness, but then another thing happens, that inward power. Have, have you noticed this struggle? It is persist, It is a persistent struggle. Yes. I, I strive to do right, 
I, I'm like the Apostle Paul. I want to do right all of the time, but there is this power that is at work in me that is against me. How do I get victory over that? This is where uh, Paul is talking to the Romans, and I believe to every one of us about this vicious, vicious cycle and battle that we have in life. We want and need forgiveness from what we have done, and we need deliverance from who we are. Yes. So that God provides not only forgiveness for our sins, and he says, it's okay, I've covered that. And then we need <clears throat> some kind of deliverance from that inclination that is in us to keep doing the wrong. Yes. Here's the good news. God has provided righteousness and salvation. How has Thank he done Jesus. that? In Christ Jesus... God has provided a dual remedy from the power of sin that is in our lives. First, he provides forgiveness of sins, and then he gives deliverance from sin and its power through Jesus Christ. Through faith in Jesus Christ, God provides and applies the righteousness of Christ to those who accept it. Hebrews 9 and verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. The blood of Christ is able to deal with a conscience that is seared or under the control of evil. Yes. So the blood of, the blood of Christ can cleanse your conscience. The blood and sacrifice of Christ can change your moral code. That is our conscience. So that we walk not by our old lifestyle and inclinations, but we are guided by the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Let me say it another way. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Yes. We must get to this place that our lives are superintended, guided, directed by the Holy Spirit and by the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. That evil, guilty, corrupted, weak, and seared conscience can be changed. It can be cleansed. Hallelujah, this is good news. You don't have to live the rest of your days with a seared, guilty conscience. Romans 3 and 23. Thank you. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. God made us just and righteous in his sight, not in our sight, but in his sight yes. by applying the penalty for our sins upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. It's good if, I, I'm not saying practice visualization, but get this image in your mind that Jesus is hanging on the cross and that your sins, your iniquities, your transgressions, all of the actions that you've done that are front and against God have been laid upon Jesus Christ, that he is bearing your sin on the cross. That is what is going on. Romans 3 and verse 24 says, we are justified by grace. This is the unmerited favor of God. Yes. Romans 5 and 1, we are justified by faith. This faith is on the Lord Jesus Christ. We have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I think I need to go one step farther in faith. Uh, faith is trusting your life to the Lord. Yes. Relying upon him. It's not just believing that he was or even that he is. It's a faith that you trust him. Yes. You trust him with your life. Mm -hmm. Romans 5, 9, we're justified by blood, by Jesus' blood. Jesus paid our debt, the debt that we owed. He paid it by sacrificing and giving his life's blood. Romans 4 and verse 24 and 25, we are justified by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. 
Romans 8 and verse 23, we are justified by God who reckons us to be righteous. Yeah. So God says, you are righteous. Romans 8 and verse 33, we are justified by God who reckons us to be righteous. James 2 and verse 24, we are justified by works that are the evidence of faith, not works that try to make us righteous, but works that are a result of what God has already done in us. Yes, it, amen. This, uh, again, bears need for expansion. When we are saved, truly saved and made righteous in Christ, our works change. Yes, they do. The things that you desire to do changes. And we begin living a different kind of life. So here's, here's a problem that arises. If we know to do good and do it not, the Bible says it is sin. So we must do the right thing. In, in the early church, there was a, a doctrine that was uh, raised about this, this concept that uh, if, if mercy is shown and we are saved because we are sinned, the more we sin, the greater the mercy of God is. So we should sin more. <clears throat> no. And Paul addresses that let us not sin that the grace and mercy of God may abound. Yes. But let us live this life that we are justified by the works that we do. Amen. Romans 3 and verse 25. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. Yes. People who are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood, this sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. What that's saying is God already in the beginning, have you read that verse of scripture that Christ died from before the foundation of the earth? In God's mind, God saw that Jesus Christ would be the propitiation, the price that was necessary to redeem man from their sins. God saw that. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, he went and preached to those who were in prison, yes. gave them the opportunity to believe. What does that mean? Those that had already died, who were the righteous dead. Jesus preached to them, showed that he was the savior. When they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, they were brought along. That's what this verse is talking about. That Jesus Christ was the price that was necessary. His shed blood was necessary to keep those that would have eternal damnation because the only way, hear me, the only way that anyone is going to make it into eternal life for eternity with God is through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's right. Verse 26. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did, did this to demonstrate his righteousness for he himself is fair and just and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for our justification. When by faith, we take a stand in the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood deals with everything that we have done. So all of our past is under the blood of Jesus Christ. This is powerful. The blood deals with and disposes everything that we have done in the past. And we are clean in God's sight because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Think about this. Jesus' blood strikes a fatal blow to the root of our capacity to sin and we are released from the power of sin. This is good news that sin has no more power over us. You can live a victorious Christian life. Yes. You ought to be shouting hallelujah. The blood of Jesus Christ is the only agent 
that is able to deal with our sins and justify us That's right. in God's sight. When God justifies a sinner, even if they are the chiefest of sinners, right. mm -hmm. he not only acquits us of our guilt, that means puts away our guilt, he, he comes and he takes the righteousness of Christ and clothes us in his righteousness. So we can actually say, and this is a this is a big deal. This is huge. I am now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. How can I say that? Not because of the works that I have done. No. Not because of my natural propensities to do evil. No. I am righteous because the blood of Jesus Christ. God has declared me righteous. It is an act of God that has made us righteous in the, in the sight of, in God's sight. That's the one that matters. Amen. So as a, re as a result of God's justification, we are enabled and made fit to stand in God's holy presence. Now, to help you to understand this, go with me again real quickly to the Old Testament and see that the high priest comes into the Holy of Holies with much trepidation and fear. Yes. When he comes in, he is, he is afraid because if he hasn't done everything right, if he hasn't washed right, if he hasn't applied the sprinkling of the blood right, if he if his garments are not clean, anything is missing that he has done, he will be struck down. That's right. Now, in Christ Jesus, because of the blood that cleanses us, oh, this is shouting ground. The blood that cleanses us, not it doesn't give us access into the Old Testament Holy of Holies. We have access into heaven itself, into the presence of God, so that we can come boldly before God and we can make our requests known to God without fear that, that God will cut us out. God will accept you, not because you're so good, not because you are from a good family, not because your heritage so is so good, but because the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, has cleansed you. Hallelujah. It's important for us to recognize the power of what God has done for us by justifying us and make us, making us righteous in His sight. There are three things that must be addressed in order for us to be justified and made righteous. First of all, we have all sinned and fall short of God's glory. Yes. On our part, we are all on the same level. Now I know, again, that really deflates the ego because some people want to think they're better than somebody else. Mm -hmm. We are all on the same level. We have all sinned. Second, Sin has constituted, made a barrier between us so that we cannot fellowship with God. Yes. And it brings this sense of guilt and estrangement to God. Do you remember when Adam and Eve sinned? Yes. What did they do immediately? They went and they hid. The, the fellowship, the union, the unity with God was broken. Right. And all of a sudden, they are hiding from God. And even the voice of God brings condemnation on them. And they feel like we have to make coverings for ourselves. Before they were able to stand before God in, a, in an innocence. But now they are estranged from God. Guilt is upon them. They want to cow down and hide from God. This is because they are sinners. Yes. The fellowship is broken. Third, Satan accuses us and he says, you have sinned. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. You have sinned. And it's, it, at some point in our life, every one of us has to admit, I have sinned. Yes, we do. I am a sinner. But I don't want to stop there. Because if I stop there, I am living in condemnation. 
God does not want you living in condemnation. In fact, if you're living in condemnation and you say you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ died in vain. Christ died so that you may be released from that condemnation. Romans 5 and verse 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait until you were right. This is good news. And you need to remember this verse if you're talking to a friend who's living in condemnation because of their lifestyle. And they say, well, I can't come to God because I've done so many bad things. We have all sinned, but God has demonstrated his love toward us in that while we are still sinners, while we're still a sinner, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from wrath through him? Hallelujah. So in order to bring us back to God, God took action. Before you were capable to even know that there was a breach, God took action while you were a sinner. Jesus dealt with our sin and with our guilt by nailing it to his cross. Hallelujah. And covering us with his blood. So everyone who puts their faith and trust in the Lord, they are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Christ's blood meets and defeats every attack of the enemy. Hallelujah. It's very important. This is this is important. Anytime the devil comes and he starts accusing you when you've done so many things wrong, mm -hmm. you can say, you're right. you're right. But the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed me of my sin and I am now righteous in God through the blood of Jesus Christ. I am blood covered. I am cleansed. I am not what I used to be. The wrath that was upon me, the guilt that was upon me, you don't have to live under that any longer. You are free by what Jesus Christ has done. Praise his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So to live in victory, we must appropriate by faith the value and the power of the blood of Jesus. Not your value, but how God values the blood. Yes. I think sometimes we as believers underestimate the power of what Christ has done. Yes. I have preached a series in the past and maybe at some time in the future I will preach it again. Yes. The power of the blood and the blood of the cross. Mm -hmm. It's very uh, powerful. Not because I look at the blood and say, well, the blood of Jesus is powerful. But the <laughs> omniscient, the all-knowing, almighty God looks at the blood of Jesus Christ and he looks at every one of our sins and he says it is enough no other sacrifice is necessary no other price needs to be paid no other penalty needs to be waged it takes care of it the blood of Jesus Christ God's son takes care of all of our sins thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Woo. I wish every one of us had God's estimation of what Jesus has done. Mm -hmm. Go back and read Isaiah 53, 5, verse 5 and 6, and you will see, by his stripes we are healed. He was wounded and bruised for our transgressions. Yeah. Hallelujah. All of our iniquities was laid upon him. Hallelujah to God. When you start looking at that, you see, I'm free. Yes. yes. I'm free. You're free in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The, the chains of your past life have been broken and you are free. Yes. In the Old Testament, God established a covenant. The covenant provided a day of atonement. It happened once a year. It was a day when a sacrifice, a sin sacrifice, was offered for the sins of the people. The blood of the sin sacrifice was taken outside of the camp and was brought in to the Holy of Holies and the blood was sprinkled 
in the presence of God. The high priest would enter into God's presence with the blood of sprinkling. Yes. And there would be atonement. Now atonement means that you are covered so that those that were atoned for, their, their conscience was not dealt with, yes. but their guilt was dealt with. That's right. So in God's sight, they were released from the penalty that should have been upon them. Yes. Here's what happened. Let me break it down a little more. The sacrifice animal, lamb, would be killed so that those that had sinned could go free. Right. So the sin was laid upon the sacrifice. Yes. Now when we come over into the New Testament, we, we come to a better covenant. In the New Covenant, Jesus Christ, our high priest, entered into heaven itself, not with the blood of bulls and of goats and of lambs, but he entered into heaven itself with his own blood to make atonement for us, and the blood of Jesus Christ is enough to cover us. In Exodus chapter 12, God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Judgment was certainly coming. God had, had given this warning that he was coming through the land and there was wrath coming on everyone that was in Egypt except for those who were covered by the blood. And when God saw the blood, he would pass over. Hallelujah. The blood of the lamb was God's provision for escape, redemption, and deliverance. There is life in the blood. Let me explain that. Not just that blood in your veins gives life to your body, but the blood of Jesus Christ keeps the death sentence off of you because everyone who sins must die. So Jesus Christ has put death out of the way for us so that by Jesus Christ we have life. Yes, hallelujah. And so when God sees the blood, we receive life instead of the penalty for our sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you may not understand this. Let me try to explain it. God is so holy and so pure that if you said, I didn't do it and you did, you sinned mm -hmm. and you should die for your sin. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's that's enough. Yeah. You don't have to go out and be a murderer and a rapist mm -hmm. and uh, everything else. Sin brings the penalty of death. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me go one step further. Unbelief is sin. Yes, it is. And if God says, "I will do something," and you do not believe it, that is sin. And you should die. Wow, that's tough, isn't it? That is righteousness. Jesus paid the debt for our sin so that the penalty of your sin would not be upon you. And by his righteous gift, you are released. Hallelujah. Hebrews 9 and verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled. This goes back to that Old Testament, doesn't it? Having your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. What is it? that we're sprinkled with. We're sprinkled with the blood of Jesus Christ. He covers us. Hallelujah. There is a covering for your iniquity and for your sin. And good news, now we can draw near to God with a true heart. Yes. Now here's the problem. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things yes. and beyond cure. Mm -hmm. Beyond cure. 
who can understand it. God says the heart is desperately sick and beyond cure. Mm -hmm. If it's beyond cure, what hope is there for the for the sinner? Something has to happen yes. to our inner being, to our heart, to the inner man. Yes. So I cannot do this on my own. Have you ever, let's get real, have you ever struggled to stop doing something that you knew you shouldn't do? Yes. Have you been caught in that? Yes, I have. You say, I don't want to do that. I don't want to think that way. I don't want to act that way. I don't want, do and you start struggling with it. Mm -hmm. We're powerless to do it sure. on our own. And we're beyond cure. That's right. This is where a lot of people get caught in a trap. Mm -hmm. of, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to counseling to change the way that I think. I'm going to go, I'm going to read all of these books on positive thinking and positive confession. I, I don't think those are wrong. And sometimes people need that added help. But the truth of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, the blood of Jesus Christ can deal with your conscience, can Amen. deal with your desperately sick heart. Yes. Before we can be cleansed in our conscience, our heart must be dealt with. Mm -hmm. We must sprinkle our heart from an evil conscience. Sprinkle my heart. Now, I know those words sound a little funny to some people. How do I sprinkle my heart from an evil conscience? I sprinkle my heart by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. The law will point out your weaknesses. Yes, It'll it tell you what you are failing in. It demonstrates all of our desperately evil ways. Mm -hmm. The law made a covering, atonement from judgment, mm -hmm. the day of atonement. But the law was not able to clean the heart. No. It reminds me of a person who is standing before the judge and the judge says, you're condemned to die. You know that you're guilty. And somebody comes in and takes your place. Mm -hmm. But you live the rest of your life with a feeling of condemnation. Look, I know that I did wrong. I did not deserve someone else to do it. But this is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus came in where you were guilty. Amen. And he made a way for you to escape. God's value of the blood of Jesus Christ has not changed. The blood of Christ is sufficient for all of our sins. It gives us boldness to come before God, to enter into his holy place and stand by faith before the Father. Look at the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. But now, but now, right now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Hebrews 10 and 19. Having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So now we have boldness. Verse 22. Let us then draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Here's, here's a point that you need. This will help your prayer life. This will help your walk with God. What you've got to do is this. When you come before God and you're presenting your need, your deficit, always come in faith in Jesus' blood. That's right. That's right. We have in the past in the church, we used the term, I plead the blood of Jesus. This is what this is talking about. I plead the blood over my life. I believe that let our confession be in harmony with God's. God says, 
The blood of my son has covered you. Let us make that confession for ourselves and come before God and say, God, I failed again. God, I need help today. I need healing today. I need supply today. I come under the covering of the blood of Jesus Christ into the holy place, into the holy of holies, not on this earth, but in heaven itself. I come before the Father and I say, Father, I have need and the blood of Jesus Christ gives us that act. Access. Yes, amen. So if you're in that process and Satan starts accusing you and saying, you ought to go run and hide. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Look who you are anyway. Y'all, you could you could sit there and say, I I don't even have a right to pray. I don't have a right to come before God. But that is when we overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans 3, 8, pardon me, Romans 8 and verse 33. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, it is, is also risen who is even at the right hand of God, who makes intercession for us. This takes this study into a much deeper level, which we'll, we'll be heading, heading into in the next few weeks. Not only has the blood of Jesus Christ dealt with our condemnation, but he is also at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us so that we have one in the heavenly places who is interceding for us. Amen. So God is able to deal with our sins, our inadequacies, our failures because of what Jesus has done. Yes. So Hallelujah. let's deal with self-confidence. In this world, you need to have some. I mean, you're not going to succeed in this life if you try to get a job or you try to do something and you keep saying to yourself, I can't do it. I'm good for nothing. I can't succeed. I can't find an answer. Keep saying that and you'll, you'll defeat yourself completely. Mm -hmm. But when you come to God, self-confidence will never work. All of our confidence is in Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus' blood, Jesus' sacrifice is what you need. You need this covering for your lives. So let's, let's do this. Let's make this a, a practice. When we were studying in the book of Revelation, we came across this verse and it's one that I, I think it's got to be a lifestyle for us. We overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ yes. and the word of our confession, our yes. testimony. That's right. So what you've got to start doing, live in confidence in Jesus. Living Every day in Jesus. I'm living this life of victory. Not because I'm good, but because Christ has covered me. I, 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 I don't know I want, that I want you to get a visual image of this, but a, a, a mental image might be good that you are covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. It is a shield for you. And then the second part of that is you have to change your confession. Now, I cannot confess to be free if I do not believe that he has set me free. That's right. If I am practicing condemnation and guilt and shame, I will be defeated. That's right. But I put my confidence in Jesus Christ.